Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Thinkersize, a weekly virtual design challenge brought to you by the Seattle Design Festival. I'm your host this week, Trevor Dykstra, along with my co-host, Yasser Altamimi. Hey. And Yuris Garon. Hey there. <laughs> this week, we have a special guest with us, Vicki Ha, an architect working at Amazon who has brought us a interesting challenge. Uh, we're going to be building our own adventure forts. And hey. Vicky, right now is when we're gonna ask you what, what, uh, what made you think of this sort of challenge? So two different things. First of all, I have, I'm a new parent and me and my husband in this sort of quarantine period, we're constantly trying to figure out how to keep him entertained, as well as try to challenge his um, personal development or child development, I suppose. Uh, he's still fairly young, so um, we're trying not to take him out too much because he's too young to wear a mask. Um, so, you know, we spend a lot of time at home and primarily it's trying to figure out what to do. So that's one aspect of it. Uh, the other aspect is that my husband, uh, He's been doing these uh, cardboard mazes for his work's Halloween uh, event every year for the last, I don't know, seven years or something. And so he's really into making cardboard mazes. And these mazes that he makes for work, I mean, they, how, they, they, they run like hundreds of kids through them. It's really, really impressive. Wow. Um, and and they're, they're really fun and, you know, it takes a lot of planning and a lot of hard work, but uh, all the kids enjoy it and it's super fun. So we decided to try to do a similar thing at home for my son. And so that's why I thought I would also bring this challenge to everyone here because it's, it's fun. Oh, that's really interesting. So uh, tell us, Vicky, how do you make your own maze? Sure. Um, so I guess that, uh, the way that I would make my own maze and, uh, I can walk you through my process a little bit, um, That'd be great. is I first ask myself, uh, who am I building a maze for? And I would encourage everyone to ask the same question because you can build your maze for, you know, mine is for my kid, obviously, but you can also build it for adults, to be honest. <laughs> There, if you get large size Home Depot boxes, they fit adults pretty well. <laughs> um, you can also make it for your cat or your gerbil or your dog or whatever it is. And knowing your audience basically gives you a size criteria for how big the tunnels for the maze have to be. Um, if you have a young child, you probably want to make it open to above so that uh, you know they don't get scared or get too lost or anything. Um, so find, knowing your audience is the first thing. Um, and then I would probably say, uh, figure out what materials you have to work with. And uh, in my case, we had a couple boxes left over from moving. So we had some, you know, fairly large size Home Depot or Lowe's boxes, um, as well as lots of blankets, lots of pillows, a dining room table. Uh, you know, we, we, uh, if I was doing this for an older kid, I would probably try to create a bunch of props like teddy bear in distress that you have to rescue or like, uh, I don't know, like a trap or something, or like you could, you could even have um, uh, make like paving stones out of, I don't know, sheet pans or something that you can only step on them because the rest of it is lava. Like come up with the story for that uh, to go along with the maze is always fun. And if you have kids that are, of the age where they can help think up the story, that's even more fun because then you're keeping them occupied as well. <laughs> um, so that's sort of the next step. Um, and then after that, I would draw a flowchart. So uh, Trevor, maybe you want to bring up that flowchart that I shared with you guys. <laughs> All right, here we go, sir. <laughs> that's okay. Uh, let's see here. So we're going to look at this one. Hopefully this is one of them. Yeah. So, I mean, I made a flow chart that sort of says entry to exit. Uh, and, you know, this in this particular storyline, there's three choices. You go to the well, sorry, the dungeon, the swamp, or the castle. And, uh, you know, you, you have to do all three in sequence. So you have to go rescue your teddy bear first from the dungeon. 
then you have to retrieve the magic ukulele from the Swamp Witch's house and you know, then <laughs> defeat the evil king, who in this case I said was a giant stuffed toy panda with an eye patch. <laughs> so, uh, you know, different, you can make up the stories and you make the flow diagram and you can see this is actually fairly simple. It's got three paths. Uh, you basically backtrack along a path to get to the next path. So maze-wise, it's fairly simple, but you can add shortcuts, you can add dead ends, you can add uh, different twists around. I was also thinking that um, for this particular one, uh, I, I have the tower, and I was thinking that you can go vertical with it. So like climb up an ottoman onto the couch onto the other couch you know <laughs> so trying to get some height into it's it as well. very creative <laughs> <laughs> and, and then you know we've got lots of things like uh i've got a, a drying uh clothes drying rack that you can put up and then you can hang uh shoelaces from it or something to create like a vine room and uh you know, if you have a skylight in the house and maybe there's like the well, you look up at the sky or something. So, I mean, it, it, it's all part of the story and the flow. So this is the next step of it. Uh, and then from there, you sort of, you know, uh, I think I have a diagram of some hand sketches. Um, oh, well, here's the <laughs> materials. Oh, yeah. so, here's some, yeah, here's here's some, some materials. images. Yeah, so th these are images. This is one in my living room. Wow. So it's fairly <laughs> simple. It's been a big move. <laughs> <laughs> so this one was, uh, this one is the one that my husband did for his work. And you can see it's fairly complex. Uh, <laughs> duct tape is key. It's very useful and very handy. Um, and then, so there's a, an image of just hand drawing. Oh, here's, here's an image of ah. castle, swamp, and dungeon. So here's your three choices. Uh, as you can see, um, Christmas lights go a long way to creating atmosphere. Wow. That's great mood lighting. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, Oops, that's know. the same one. There we go. I think there's only... Oh, yeah, here. Only one and this was, uh, you know, somebody got creative and made the entrance. As you can see, it's oh. a giant skull. And they put lights in it. You know, you, come, you can go crazy, put sensors. Oh, I, I see a dragon in the back. Exactly. <laughs> Someone made a dragon. And there's a castle in the back as well. And uh, it's, always, it's always fun. Um, yeah. And I have one. I have the hand-drawn one here. I'm, I'm pulling it in at the moment as I download it. Uh, <laughs> It should look like I can give you some tips or my husband's like you know after doing this for seven years or something he's got a bunch <laughs> well, of well I was gonna ask one question I was gonna ask are yeah. you defining uh the the uh the layout based upon what is in your house or are you letting the story tell the thing and then trying to find uh, to a certain extent. So, for example, these are just some of my chicken scratchings for how to lay this out. But, you know, if you have a kitchen next to your dining room, next to your living room, and you have a hallway, that's sort of like a good pivot point because your hallway reaches to all the different rooms. So that was kind of the start of it. Or if you're using boxes, and you can literally do the diagram on the right that sort of shows uh, a grid of boxes and then how you would match them all up. So I think it totally depends on uh, what your materials are. And if most of it is your house, you know, you can dump out from a hallway into a room. And if you follow my story, the kitchen is the swamp where, you know, <laughs> daddy will dress up as the swamp witch and you have to go to the <laughs> oven. So you have to go to the oven to find the magic ukulele or something. <laughs> so totally depends. You can make it as elaborate or as simple as you like. <laughs> you know, I love the back and forth of the, the storylines and the way you're like utilizing such a compact space. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta make up you gotta make up some way to pass the time here, you know. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. This this is this is the most quarantine centric uh, uh <laughs> challenge we've had so far. Uh have any of you seen Dave Built a Maze? Mm hmm. I the, have not. A movie about a guy who builds a cardboard maze oh. in his house. Yes, actually, I have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it, but you know, that's an interesting story in itself. But then, then the thing they sort of made all the sets out of cardboard to feel like you're in the maze, and the maze is like infinitely large inside, yeah. even though it looks like a couple of cardboard boxes in his living room. Um, oh, so meta. 
So yeah. I, <laughs> well, I have a better one. You remember when Ant Man was house arrested and he built <laughs> one for his daughter? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> this is where we there need to go. insert copywritten clips from various things. <laughs> like 15 <laughs> seconds, right? There you go. Yeah, and then, I, hey, that was my idea. No. That's, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <just kidding. laughs> yeah. Oh, here, here's another question. And, and I don't know if this has been thought of. Uh, this is for the whole group, but uh, if if we don't have cardboard boxes at home or a cool couch with lots of sofa stuff, any suggestions for how you pull this off? <laughs> um, so two chairs with blankets draped over the chairs is a really easy way to make a fort. That's very creative. And costumes. Yes, and <laughs> it's got to be challenging to think of vertical stuff, right? Just like yeah. Climb and stuff. That's not easy. Yeah, that, that tends to be a bit, requires a bit more planning. Um, but so when my husband did it at his office, they would use tables. Mm -hmm. uh, so they would even have like a table version, like you would get up onto the table and then have like a tabletop maze part of it. And then underneath the maze, underneath the tables would be another separate maze that would all join up together somehow. And they would use ottomans to, for you to climb up onto the table anyway. You can make or it like, as elaborate as you want. Like how do you get into that? It's so amazing. It's like, I'm just gonna make these, these super complicated mazes. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Okay, any, or oh, was any other any other advice for folks for this week? Yeah, tips and tricks. Sure. Uh, let me see. From our architect. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So I I mentioned that blankets go a long way, duct tape goes a long way, uh, Xmas lights, Christmas lights, as I mentioned before. Oh, one of the things is. Uh, if you're an adult and you're making this, you will probably be very happy to have some sort of soft material on the floor because you will be on your knees most uh, of the time <laughs> and you will definitely want something soft to be uh, crawling around on. Um, and I guess one last piece of advice that we had was um, uh, if it's a big maze, uh, make sure you have some secret uh panels that you can quickly extract children or cats or dogs <laughs> out from because once they start crying in the maze you need to go get them as soon as possible hopefully you not access panels <laughs> everywhere you need a maze exit right like a fire exit or something yeah exactly oh i think you're muted trevor Yours, what do you think? What's your maze going to look like? Oh, I mean, luckily I got a lot of open space here. But the big thing is, you know, talking about all these different storytellings make me want to go all medieval with my, my storylines. Ah, that's, that'd be cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, what world are you going to set this within? Exactly. <laughs> what does adventure mean to you? Right. Or do we go all the way to space? You know? Yeah, Absolutely. <laughs> Speaking speaking of panels to pull children or dogs from, oh, that's one cool. other one Mickey shared. With <laughs> he was got to have a special guest, right? Which yeah. is, is, <laughs> seems important to have the dog escape. <laughs> that's true. It would be it would be great for folks who have like a garage and a garden and like a living room to connect them all together and have some like a loop around the house and that'd be a big one, a mm -hmm. great one. Yeah, make little skylights in there. You can you can turn your phone and stuff into various lighting or or other apparatus. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. So yeah, it's fun if you think of it that way because you start with like thinking about rooms, right? And then so you the room has an atmosphere. It has like a, a story that is trying to tell, and then everything else is just like connecting pieces that get from room to room to room. So that's another way to think about it too. And it, it is, there is something, something special about these small spaces. I think we, we all as kids, we love to be like hiding in those spaces and like a, bring a blanket and 
going under the blanket or she is. I don't know. It's, it's always something that attracts us to it. Yeah. It's an adventure. You bring it a torchlight. Is. It it's is. a Kelvin Hobbs thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Like, there's so many creative ways you can go about doing this. Like, I even myself as a kid, I remember making like a TP sort of setup with just a couple of brooms and a blanket. Like, oh, mm-hmm. that's all you need. <laughs> ben, whew, now I got to go to Home Depot, get some boxes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We always did the couch for it. You know, you, three cushions and you've got a room. <laughs> yeah. I think when I was a kid, we always had a big table. It's like a dining table. And I always find myself under that table. I don't know. Just playing that. It's a comfortable scale. <laughs> um, all right. Well, I think we're, we're almost out of time. Uh, okay. There are two things we want to do. One, before we get to all the closing stuff, we want to ask Vicky. We haven't gotten too much into your your life as an architect or where you are now in terms of an architect working at Amazon is an interesting thing. I won't, we won't delve into that for, for very non-disclosure reason. Uh, <laughs> uh, but, but I, you know, that is one question I have is, is whether you can share you're, you're in an interesting spot compared to some of the other architects we've talked to um, and, and what that, what that means or, or. Sure. Uh, yeah. So I, I can't tell you what my project is because it is currently confidential. Hopefully it will come out pretty soon and then I can talk about it. But um, it's an interesting place to be doing architecture from because you not only have, I mean, so, you know, I'm on the client side now. So we have to take into consideration everything from like real estate to ops to maintenance to uh, who's procuring the stuff. And that's all that the, the client has to deal with. But also, um, just because of the nature of the company at Amazon, they're also trying to insert a lot of high-tech things into um, the spaces that uh, we are designing. So that aspect of it and how do you communicate cross-discipline between technology folks and architects is very, very interesting. It's super, super juicy if anybody wants to hear me rant about it. (laughs) Um, sometimes it feels like you are talking two completely different languages, two different timelines. Like, you know, they're always talking about iterating fast iterations and architecture is like, no, it's real. It's physical. We can't knock down this wall after we (laughs) build it. So it's, it's, it's a good challenge and it's an interesting space to be working in for sure. Well, I know for a fact you have a background in computer science. That's right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, my my background is in computer science, uh, and so to a certain extent, I can kind of talk to these people because I know the yeah. language. Yeah, um, you know the lingo. But it's still so funny when you know you you're telling them, no, we're building spaces. <laughs> Th- they're real. You can't just change it tomorrow. <laughs> we have contractors. <laughs> That's interesting. It's very strange. Um, so yeah, that has put you at this interesting spot in your career. I want to know if you had any advice for young Vicky Ha, who's just <laughs> starting out. I don't know when, when you got into architecture or design, um, but, uh, uh, if you had advice for that person at the point you're at in your career now, what would that be? Well, I think, uh, it's probably the same advice that I'm trying to take myself now. And it's advice that I keep trying to remember as I go through my career. But um, I think it's never stop learning. And if you find yourself in a place where you've sort of learned mostly everything that, that there is to learn in that space, then try to move on because you should never stop learning. That's very important. So true. This is great advice. Um, <laughs> yeah. With that, uh the well, last wait, thing here. wait 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 oh wait what one, one more question <laughs> <laughs> no we, still have, we still have time. my advice to myself is to mute myself more <laughs> so on. uh vicky you're a new parent and being an arctic and a, and a parent that's a tough challenge so tell us a bit about it <laughs> i think it's just prioritization and sometimes you just have to prioritize your child uh over Absolutely. work 
and uh, trying to draw those boundaries is tough. And I don't think that I've succeeded in any way. But um, you know, I'm I'm very lucky. I have a I, I'm in a good situation. My husband's has flexible work. I have flexible work. Um, Amazing. So it's I think we're very lucky in the way that uh, for where for our place in life. And I'm sure there's lots of other folks who have bigger challenges than us. So I'm not going to say that I have solved this thing or give advice to other people. The honesty shows, and that's probably going to help calm a lot of parents out there. You're like, oh, <laughs> someone understands. <laughs> All right. Well, Vicki, do you have anything else to plug, so to speak? We're not really that type of thing, but like, <laughs> where, can, where can people find you online? Uh, what, what else would you like to shout out? Oh my gosh. Um, being a new parent also means that you don't spend very much time online anymore. <laughs> but uh, LinkedIn is always easy to find me. Um, I'm not really on Instagram or Facebook or anything too much anymore, but email me. Um, find me on LinkedIn. Um, I know, or I am still part of the SDF crowd. So, you know, uh, I'm sure if you're in Seattle, you'll find me somewhere. <laughs> awesome. Uh, well, with that, that's this week's Thinker Size. Uh, to complete this week's challenge, go on to our website, thinkersize.com, and we'll have a handy little guide there for you to follow to create your own adventure report. Vicki Ha, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Vicki. Thank you guys. <laughs>